good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We're also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's just jump into today's show. So let's just start with the daily numbers for COVID uh, here in Thailand. Health authorities on Monday said 80 more COVID-19 fatalities and 8,656 new transmissions around Thailand occurred on Sunday, bringing the accumulative toll to 2,791 deaths and a number of cases since the start of the pandemic to 345,027. They said 8,583 of the new infections were in the general population and 73 in prisons. Now, to remind people that um, Bangkok and surrounding provinces uh, will be entering a special uh, lockdown phase for the next two weeks. Uh, A curfew tonight will begin from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. And that's going to be strictly implemented. There are only a few conditions for people to be out and about after that time, one of them being that you're just returning from work or possibly going to work. Um, Other restrictions that are coming into place are all eateries are to close at 8 o'clock. Work from home is encouraged for all businesses. Strict enforcement of social distancing measures will take place. There will be no public transport services between 9pm and 4am. Closure of all infection risk businesses such as salon spas and traditional massage parlors and no gatherings of more than five people. Uh, to also reiterate that um, most of the airlines, with the exception of I think it's Thai Smile at this stage, uh, have and will be stopped flying now for the next two weeks. So just please bear that in mind if you're thinking of uh, traveling anywhere around Thailand. A lot of provinces have also placed restrictions on people coming from dark red and red zones. So um If you're planning to leave Bangkok for whatever reason, it's probably best to find out what the restrictions are so that when you get there, you're not refused entry into the province. Or even, you know, if you've booked a hotel and you turn up and you find out that, you know, they actually are not allowing red zone or dark red zone people stay at their hotel. You know, these things actually can happen and um, hotels um, can be a bit finicky like that. Now, that leads us into some uh, news on Phuket and uh, new entry requirements. Thailand's resort island of Phuket has decided to tighten travel restrictions on people arriving from the 10 maximum controlled and restricted and the 24 maximum controlled zone provinces from Thursday until the end of the month to control the spread of COVID-19. Under the new restrictions announced today by the governor of Phuket, all people arriving on Phuket from those zones will be required to be fully inoculated or one dose of AstraZeneca vaccine administered at least 14 days before their arrival by land, sea or air. They must also undergo a RT, PCR or rapid antigen test not more than seven days before their arrival. People who have recovered from a COVID-19 infection not more than 90 days before their arrival can enter the island, but they must also take an RT, PCR or rapid antigen test before their arrival. Students under 18 who cannot be vaccinated yet, who need to enter or exit Phuket to further their studies, must obtain an ID card from their educational institutes to be shown to officials at the entry or exit checkpoints. They are also required to obtain an RT-PCR COVID test certificate valid for one month from the provincial health office. Children under 6 are exempted from these restrictions. Those who enter Phuket will be required to download the More Chana app onto their smartphone so their movements on the island can be monitored by officials throughout their stay. If they fall sick and suspect that they may be infected by the virus, they must report to health officials immediately. Phuket has been open to certain foreign arrivals who are fully inoculated since July 1 under the sandbox scheme. They are required to stay in the island for 14 days before being allowed to travel to other parts of Thailand. So that's just some updated news on the entry requirements. Before, um, it was either be vaccinated or get a PCR test for people, for everybody. But now they have um, specifically made rules for red zone and dark red zone provinces. So it's going to be uh, fully vaccinated and you must have an RT-PCR test. So roughly translated, if you're vaccin- if you're not vaccinated and you're from a dark red or red zone, you won't be allowed to enter Phuket under the current restrictions. Um, to me, it seems a little too much kind of a two fingers up to domestic tourism as well you know i mean phuket are are crying out for international tourism but they certainly don't seem to want the uh thai or you know expat um 
domestic tourism that is out there. Um, I think people will not forget, in my opinion, the treatment that Phuket has been has shown to domestic travelers here. I mean, they've all, Phuket has always been known as a very expensive island, um, regardless, and it's always turned away a lot of uh, Thai people. Um, I've seen various websites where hotels who have been trying to, during this pandemic, who's been trying to get Thai customers were lambasted for suddenly, you know, uh, lowering their rates and trying to attract Thai customers and people saying, well, you only want it because you've nothing now. And as soon as international tourists come back, you'll forget all about us and go straight back to selling at super high prices that we can't afford. And it is kind of true. It's already started. You need to have uh, hotels need to change their concept of what they want and what they think they can get. Um, it needs they need to find a balance between international tourism and domestic tourism. Because for the next few years, it's not going to be like it was before, where it was really on an island like Phuket. It was all international tourism. Thai people really stayed clear of it. They found it expensive. Uh, even just eating out was expensive. And they find other holiday destinations within Thailand to go to. So, yeah, I mean, Phuket does need to smarten up a bit. Now, that's also bringing us on to another story that uh, has come in. There has now been three more infections. Uh, COVID infections from abroad from the sandbox model and actually uh, there was two more since my last story so that's five in total we had two Myanmar children uh, who flew in on the sandbox model uh, they were on their second COVID test they were found to uh, be COVID positive so as they were young children they were sent to hospital and the mother obviously to care for her children she decided that she would go and stay with them in hospital knowing that she would have to do quarantine now that she had she'd done this but she now has also turned out to be COVID positive so she also now is in hospital with them then there was an African man that was uh, found to be COVID positive he traveled with two friends uh, recently and that was on his second COVID test as well and then I cannot remember where the third gentleman was from but another person was found to be COVID positive. And again, it wasn't on arrival. It was their second test. So what does this tell us a little bit? And we have a lot of travelers that are not a lot, but we've had, I mean, well, what have we had about 20 cases? Or no, confirmed cases now, about eight or nine from abroad. And then people have been put into uh, quarantine as well. So what do we learn from this? Well, most people seem to be testing positive on their second COVID test, which would put them on day five or six. So they've tested negative 72 hours before their flight they've tested negative when they arrived so it seems like it but it seems like they're getting the COVID here in Phuket and it's certainly not being imported and I think that would explain why the governor has suddenly closed all the schools in Phuket why restrictions are getting tighter I think there is a problem possibly in Phuket where there's a lot more infections than we're being told about and I do find, as I've also said this before, the numbers are a bit sketchy at the moment. Now, these people who turned out to be positive are not from abroad, are not being included in the local daily numbers, which is very strange because it looks like they've actually gotten COVID in Thailand. So they're trying to maybe play down the numbers a little bit uh, because, of course, they don't want to come to that 90 in a week, which would mean signal the end of the Phuket sandbox. So I think they'll do whatever they can to keep it going and if that means maybe hiding some numbers i think i definitely think they would do it you know because it seems that tourism is more important to them than anything else at the moment now with all this talk of lockdowns and everything it's understandable that we've forgotten that in three days the samui plus plan will be starting Koh Samui is to embark on a tourism reopening scheme later this week and local business operators are confident the Samui Plus model will throw a lifeline to the tourism industry in the same way the Phuket Sandbox scheme has done on that resort island. The Samui Plus model, which covers Koh Samui, Koh Panyang and Koh Tao, starts on July 15th and will herald those islands reopening to tourism. However, unlike the Phuket Sandbox, tourists are required to stay in Alternative Local Quarantine, or ALQ, for the first seven days. Rachaporn Pulsawadi, president of the Tourism Association of Koh Samui, said the community is watching the pilot Phuket Sandbox program launched on July 1 and is confident the Samui Plus model will work. He said the Phuket Sandbox shows Thailand can manage health risks related to the reopening of tourism during the pandemic. 
The discovery of three COVID-19 imported cases under the Phuket Sandbox scheme is proof of robust screening. Mr. Rechaporn said, testing foreign visitors for the virus is part of the reopening plan and measures are in place to handle the situation. It is a form of insurance for foreign tourists and local people alike, he said. He also noted that COVID-19 restrictions under Sui, Samui Plus are more intense than those adopted in Phuket. Tourists are required to stay at Samui Hotel listed under the Safety and Health Administration SHA, system during the first week and their activities will be closely supervised. After seven days, they are allowed to visit two other islands for tours or transfer to their hotels on these islands, but they must be listed under the SHA Plus system. After a complete two weeks stay in designated areas, tourists with a negative result will be free to travel to, to other provinces nationwide. These health safety measures make traveling on the three islands safe. He said the Samui Plus is likely to attract 1,000 travelers, mainly from Israel, England, Germany and Scandinavia countries in the first month of reopening and generate 100 million baht for the local economy. So another, I think, a little delusional in the idea that they have taken the Phuket sandbox model and made it even more difficult for travelers. I don't know. Is there anybody out there in the UK at the moment, Germany, Scandinavia or Israel who are coming to Samui to undergo alternative state quarantine in Samui along with uh, being monitored pretty much 24 hours per day. I'd love to know if any of my listeners out there at the moment are considering this. It would be interesting to hear why you have chosen to do Samui uh, and what are your reasons. I, I genuinely would like to know. They seem to think tourists enjoy all these COVID tests and that they're just itching to get back here. Based on the Phuket sandbox numbers, people are not itching to get back to Phuket and especially when they're seeing what happens when you test positive. Um, it's not a safety net for tourists, as he said. It's quite the opposite. It's a nightmare for tourists if they test positive because their holiday is finished. They're thrown into a quarantine hotel and if they are positive tested, they're bungled into a, a hospital, even if they have no symptoms and they're kept there. And they're probably wondering why they ever got vaccinated because the, their treatment, you know, would not be what you would expect off your host country trying to get you to stay there. One of the things that has been bothering me is, is a lot about this alternative state quarantine for people who are close contacts. Now, I've seen your answers down below and a lot of people and what they seem to be saying is if you are a close contact, yes, but it, you are maybe you have to uh, self isolate at home for a few days and do a COVID test. And in many countries, that's standard. But here in Thailand, it seems to be put them in quarantine for 14 days. That's their answer to everything. And it's just not on if you're a tourist. I think the Tourism Authority of Thailand need to come up with a a plan for people that do become close contacts. I think they should maybe, I, I read somewhere and I agree with it, maybe pay for these hotels that they're being put into, offer refunds and guarantee refunds to of their hotels that they've already paid for. Now, I read that they should get refunds. Should doesn't mean you will. And it should be written in as a guarantee that if you test positive or you're a close contract, you will get your money back for anything that you have paid for. So, for example, if I've paid for my two week holiday and I spent 50,000 baht for the hotel, I will get that back. If I paid in advance 8,000 baht for three COVID tests and I'm not going to actually use them because I'm in hospital and my insurance company are now paying for them, I better get my money back. If I've gone, a, if I've prepaid for tours, I get my money back. And that should be written into the sandbox model. And there should be a thing that maybe re-looking at how long you're keeping people in isolation if they're close contacts. As I said, a friend of mine is in Singapore and I think he's he's been put, he was a close contact to somebody, done a PCR test. He goes four nights into quarantine and does in a quarantine hotel, paid for by the state, by the way. He doesn't pay for it. They pay for it. And then he does a PCR test on his last day. And then once that's negative, he can leave again. And that's it. It's four days is four days. It's not, you know, a lifetime. It's not two weeks. It's not a first test on day one. And then we'll come back in six or seven days to do the next one again. It, it, Thailand need to rethink all of this because if they're genuine about trying to attract tourists, then they need to understand a couple of things. Number one, tourists don't want this. Number two, there's plenty of COVID in Thailand. And there's a very good chance that even vaccinated people coming here could get infected with COVID in Thailand. And as we're seeing at the moment, especially in the Phuket sandbox model, people who are on their second COVID tests seem to be getting the COVID locally from Phuket people. What does that tell you about 
the whole situation. They're not coming to a COVID free zone. So treating tourists like this is just, in my opinion, not on. And it's a very poor advertisement for the country and for tourism. And finally, a roundup of all the top stories around Thailand today. Bangkok businesses seek financial relief. Business operators in the capital are calling for financial relief measures, including a debt moratorium and new loans with relaxed conditions to help small and medium enterprises cope with COVID-19. People wrongly prosecuted, detained, entitled to compensation. The Justice Ministry is looking for 411 people who were wrongly prosecuted, tried and imprisoned in criminal cases, but later found not guilty and released, so they can be compensated. Calls for booster jabs grow after nurses' death. Calls to give medical workers a booster shot are growing after a 30-year-old nurse died after contracting COVID-19 despite having received two doses of the Sinovac vaccine. Rapid antigen tests to be made available to Bangkok public to relieve pressure on hospitals. Thai Revenue Department denies charging VAT on vaccines bought by private hospitals. Burmese Junta Election Commission claims 11 million fraud cases. Protesters run car mobs focus on eroding coalition parties. And finally, congratulations to Italy who were crowned European champions after defeating England on penalties in last night's glamour final in Wembley Stadium. Thanks for tuning in today and your continued support. If you did like this video, please hit that like button and do subscribe to the channel if you're not already a member. Otherwise, we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care and thanks.